When Gog Comes, Correcting the Timeline of the Last Days by John Little, copyright April 2022, narrated by the author. Concluding the Core Chapters Writing the core chapters of this book was one of the most difficult challenges that I've ever faced. It turned my world upside down and forced me to realize how bleak the future is for our way of life, and few will survive what is coming. The death toll will be in the billions. Years ago, I thought that merely millions would die. Then I realized that it would be tens, then hundreds of millions, before realizing that most of the world would perish by the time that the first six seals of Revelation 6 were opened. Some of those billions will die for completely man-made reasons, as people and nations struggle over vital resources that are in decline. Then, as scarcity bites ever more deeply, starvation and then disease will wipe out many. Yes, the four horsemen of the apocalypse begin their ride before Gog and Magog descend upon Israel. And that's another thing that I did not understand when I started writing this book. Now, it's so obvious, I wonder at my inability to see it before. I talk about the seven seals of Revelation in the penultimate chapter of this book. Just remember that what is seen cannot be unseen. That chapter was the result of a fierce internal struggle that I had not wanted anything to do with. Gog and Magog are a part of seal six of Revelation six? Had I lost my mind? Maybe but it doesn't change what's coming. And by the time you read this, the four horsemen may have already begun their ride. Their time is closing upon us quickly since the reasons for why they ride the world are already here. But that's the story for a different book. The point is all about your survival. You can't serve God in this life if you are dead. And the body of Christ will need your help when the most difficult moment in time since the great flood arrives. The civilization that we know today will cease to exist. Cities will be destroyed. Electricity will fail. Water distribution will stop. Crops will not be harvested. Food will not be distributed. Cars and trucks will not work. As people die of thirst and starvation, they will rob and kill those who have what they need. Governments will fail as social order collapses. Communities with enough preparation have a chance to survive if there are enough people with moral values to glue a community together. And there is no better glue than Christians who are willing to prepare for others and sacrifice what they have to help bring their neighborhoods and towns back from the brink of destruction. Yes, you must prepare not just for yourself and your family. You must prepare for your community. Part of our job as Christians is to help those in need. You cannot be a Christian and not want to help those who are in desperate circumstances. But there is something even bigger than disaster preparation. Think of how the gospel will spread as people realize that Christians are willing to sacrifice themselves to save others. They will realize that there's something special about what it means to follow Christ. Our job is to seek the salvation of those who are lost, and this will be a great opportunity to do that. Now, let's summarize what we have discovered so far about when God comes. And no, we aren't done yet. The three biggest reasons. The list of reasons is long for why Gog and Magog must come years before the Antichrist. So, let me give the three most important ones. The invasion of Israel by Gog and Magog is not at all like the invasion by the Antichrist. The events surrounding Gog and Magog are not at all like the events surrounding the Antichrist. But here's the most important reason of all. The salvation of Israel happens years before the coming of the Antichrist, while the Bible records this return of Jacob as happening after Gog and Magog. Those three reasons by themselves are enough to prove completely that Gog is not the Antichrist and that Gog and Magog are coming long before the Antichrist arrives. It also proves that you must prepare for the great catastrophe that will also come, 
when Gog leads his military alliance against Israel. But let's look at the full list. The Army of the Antichrist. There are five invasions of Israel by the Antichrist. Gog is described as invading once. The Israel at the time of the Antichrist will not look like the Israel of today. What Daniel 11 indicates is deeply disturbing. Israel will have suffered heavy damage long before the Antichrist rises. The Antichrist comes during a time of war. Gog comes during a time of peace. The Antichrist has opposition, lots of it. That realization was a new one for me, the lots of it part. The Antichrist captures Jerusalem. Gog does not capture Jerusalem. Israelis need to run away from the Antichrist. Israelis do not need to run away from Gog. The Antichrist will not be buried, but he and his false prophet will be thrown alive into hell. Gog will be buried and will have a grave in a valley called Hamon Gog. The Antichrist assembles all nations. Gog assembles a specific set of nations to invade Israel. There are merely hours, or maybe days, between the destruction of the Antichrist and the millennium. After Gog is destroyed, there must be enough time for Israeli Christians to reach spiritual maturity and to seal the 144,000. Daniel 9 is about Jesus and not about the Antichrist. Seriously, kids, stop the false teaching about Daniel's 70th week. Not one verse in Daniel 9 is about the Antichrist. Daniel 8 and 11 are about the Antichrist, not Antiochus Epiphanes. That's right, both. You need to get that. The king of the south is actually the king of the Negev. Could Beersheba be this king's capital? Israel accepts Christ and is Christian before the Antichrist rises. Ezekiel and Zechariah say that the salvation of Israel is after Gog is destroyed. From Ezekiel 38, the Antichrist rules all the world. Gog's influence is over only part of the world. Hooks are not in the mouth of the Antichrist to invade Israel and Jerusalem. But Gog has those hooks in his jaws. Not a strong argument, but worth keeping in mind. The Antichrist is cast alive into hell, Revelation 19.20. Gog is not. Gog is buried in the valley of Hamon Gog. Ezekiel 39. This is where we see Ezekiel mention the fire that is sent upon Magog and upon those who dwell carelessly, Ezekiel's fire. When the Antichrist comes, the wrath of God will be absolute. Few will survive. When Gog comes, God's wrath will be more limited. Many will die, but billions will survive. The Antichrist is not reluctant to invade Israel and does so several times. Gog doesn't want to invade and requires hooks to force him to attack Israel. The return of Jacob must happen before the Antichrist invades Israel. Only after Gog is destroyed will Israel be saved. Zechariah 12-13 Planes, trains, and automobiles are knocked out. This is also where we compare and contrast Zechariah 12 and 13, Gog and Magog, with the chapter about Armageddon and the millennium, Zechariah 14. In Zechariah 14, Jerusalem becomes the center of the world. In Zechariah 12, God makes sure that Jerusalem is not. In Zechariah 14, God saves Jerusalem first. In Zechariah 12, Jerusalem comes second. In Zechariah 14, Jerusalem is conquered, the women raped, and half the city flees into the wilderness. In Zechariah 12, the inhabitants of Jerusalem successfully defend the city with even the weakest being so incredibly strong that they will slay all their enemies, just like David did. In Zechariah 14, Jerusalem is rescued by God himself. In Zechariah 12, God gives the inhabitants of Jerusalem supernatural strength and the ability to defend themselves. In Zechariah 14, God physically saves Jerusalem and Israel. In Zechariah 12 and 13, God spiritually saves them, and there's no description in chapter 14 of Israel finally returning to God. Israel will already be Christian when Jesus returns. After all, 
There's a reason why the people of Jerusalem are fleeing the Antichrist. Isaiah 30. In this chapter, we don't see the names of Gog and Magog, but Isaiah 30 ties itself directly to them when it talks about the day of the great slaughter, the day when the towers fall, a moon as bright as the sun, a sun that is seven times brighter than normal, the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. That last point is salvation and can only be salvation. But that salvation comes after the great slaughter that we see in Zechariah 13. Two-thirds of everyone in the land of Israel will die, but the third that survives will accept Jesus as their Savior. However, this discussion in Isaiah 30 brought up some interesting thoughts. Why does God send fire upon Magog and the other nations in Ezekiel 39? after the invasion of Gog and Magog has begun. When does the fourth angel pour out his bowl upon the sun in Revelation 16? Before the invasion of the kings of the east and the battle of Armageddon. That alone means that Gog cannot be the Antichrist. Why Israel must be saved before the great tribulation. Then we come to the last point that should make it absolutely clear that Gog is not the Antichrist and that Gog must come years before the Antichrist. It literally does not get more clear than this. And it has everything to do with the nature of salvation itself and the fact that God will save Jacob before the Antichrist arrives. Here are the key points. The proof of the salvation of the children of Jacob before the Antichrist is so clear that those who disagree should be the ones required to prove their point, and they can't. Hebrews 8 and Galatians are clear that God will not be bringing the children of Jacob back to the law of Moses, also known as Torah. Revelation 12 shows us that the Jews living in Jerusalem must be saved before the Antichrist. The prophecies about the salvation of Israel all show that Israel enters the land of Israel before they are saved. All the prophecies about the salvation of Israel show them being saved in the land of Israel, not outside of Israel. Therefore, the children of Israel must be saved before Revelation 12. The 144,000 men of the 12 tribes of Israel must be saved long before the coming of the Antichrist. The salvation of Israel is profoundly spiritual. If nothing else, The sealing of the 144,000 Israelis in Revelation 7 should be enough of a clue that Israel must be following Christ long before the Antichrist arrives. Enough of a clue that we all should have serious questions about current theories concerning the last days. There's just no way that you can look at Revelation 7 and see anything else. Although, yes, I understand that this is all very difficult. Conclusion of the Conclusion The evidence is absolutely clear. Gog is not the Antichrist, and he's coming long before the Antichrist arrives. Unfortunately, that also means that something else must be true. Ezekiel's fire and great devastation come before the Antichrist arrives. This cannot be more clear or more awful. The four horsemen of Revelation 6 and Ezekiel's fire will lead to billions of people dying terribly. And a lot of those will be our brothers and sisters in Christ. Therefore, it is our duty before God to accept the truth of this and take action. We must help the body of Christ prepare for what is coming. This knowledge brings a truly crushing responsibility, and you do not have the choice of avoiding it. The fact that you know what is coming means that you must act. If you do not act, the blood of all who suffer and die needlessly will be on your hands. Remember Ezekiel 3 if you doubt me in this. But before you act, there is one thing that you must do. Turn away from your sins and ask God to forgive you. You can't get to the next point without this. Seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit about what you need to do. Then go and do your very best to warn everyone that you can and to prepare for the worst moment in time since the great flood. 
I will be right there with you. I've been at this for a very long time, and I don't intend to stop until God calls me home. My hope is that God will allow someone to take this warning to Jerusalem to help them prepare and to warn them that the earthquake is coming, that their electricity will fail, that every building will be knocked down, and that two-thirds of all the people in all the land of Israel will die. It will mean being there before it happens and doing our best to help while it happens. Israel will need our help when Gog comes. If I am still alive when the final warning comes, I hope to see you in Jerusalem. But wait, there's more. There's a note of finality to what I just said, but we still have more that we can add to our understanding. There are more prophecies and more detail. It's great that you understand the core of what is coming, but there's more to be said. So let's keep going with the supporting passages. When Gog comes, correcting the timeline of the last days by John Little, Copyright, April 2022, narrated by the author.